I remember getting pulled over and crying, bro. I was F. Like, I would not be able to pay rent. YouTube. I'm on my way to the shop, man, but I was, I've been thinking about the channel, man. I posted every single day, 365 videos in like 365 days. I think there were two days the whole year that I, I missed, but I made it up the next day with like a two, two day video drop or something like that. I just been really working really, really hard. And the last two months, my numbers have had dropped in half. I'm talking about my channel was doing like one and a half million views a month and it went down to like 750k and then my subscriber count would go would be like anywhere from five to eight thousand new subscribers a month and it had i remember it had dropped all the way to like two thousand subscribers last month and so i realized maybe i was putting out too much content maybe i was doing too much and here's the thing like in order to keep quality you have to delegate so i think the quality improved and the quantity went up because I wasn't editing my own videos. I still don't edit my own videos, Georgie does. And it still didn't work out. So I think it was just a frequency thing because I stopped dropping videos so often. Now my subscriber counts are back up. Now my views are back up. I've had more views in the last 15 days dropping probably seven videos or six videos than I had all of the last two months almost combined that's not what this video about the point of that i'm telling you guys about that is you can't control what you can't control it there's no point in complaining about things that you can't control so i just kind of tried something new and it ended up working out but doesn't mean i'm gonna completely like slow down or anything like that i'm gonna continue to try to be as consistent as possible i'm just gonna be making a whole lot of videos and holding them a whole lot of videos and holding them and then just having you know a bunch of tutorials in the chamber you know like a month's worth so that always have content no matter what i have to sip, sip a little a little bit of that energy all right so since i've been like really thinking about the channel where it's headed what is the mission? What's the point of this channel? It really gave me an opportunity to really think about it, right? And ultimately, this is a channel for for upcoming beginner barbers, man. Like, you know, I, I want everybody to have content that they'll like. And I think everyone should still, you know, watch it. Like, there's nothing wrong with barbers who've been doing it for a while watching these videos. Even the reactions and stuff, entertainment or the tutorials because it's entertaining. And there's always going to be some nuggets in them, you know, that every anybody can learn from. I mean, I'll be learning in my own videos, but I really need to get back to the fundamentals and really try to continue to inspire and motivate and educate um, all these upcoming barbers, man, because I kind of lost sight of that just because of my own selfish reasons. When I say selfish, I mean like that. I was just getting bored. You know what I mean? I'm doing the same thing over and over again, not realizing it. It might be the same thing to me because I've been doing it for freaking six, seven years, but most of the day ones are already gone you know they're over the channel most of my my viewers are new you know what i mean so i gotta focus i gotta stay consistent man so that brings up my other point i need to get back to being consistent with the topics and, and, and what this channel is about and so i woke up this morning really thinking about beginner basio and what it was what it was like during barber school and my first year in a barber shop. I wanna share that with you guys. When I was enrolling into barber school, I had decided to start my adult life. I was 20 years old, my wife was like 19. I had dropped out of college, had a full basketball scholarship. And I started working at Boston Market as a dishwasher and a food prep. In the morning, I come in at like six o'clock in the morning and then wash dishes during the afternoon so that I could, you know, make some hours because you don't need to do food prep that long. And that was that was the job that I was working until I seen, you know, they were building a brand new Arby's in my area. So I, I put in a, an application there because I was like, I was thinking to myself, this is a, a fresh start and it's an opportunity where everybody's kind of like on an even playing field and you can prove yourself and work your way up in the company. And I was right. I ended up becoming the general manager in like a year, year and a half or something like that. I was so naive, I was so young, I, I didn't know pretty much anything. I remember I, I used to like be so proud of it because I had a plan, I put an action behind it, and I did it. 
but nobody else was proud of me. <laughs> and I couldn't understand it because I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm a GM of a store, and it's obviously it was because I was, it was a, it was a fast food restaurant. Yo, Basu, you working at a fast food restaurant, bro? But I took a lot of pride in it. I learned a lot of things, and I don't knock nobody for working their way up in fast food because it's part of what made me who I am today. You know, I had all these responsibilities. You know, I was learning about leadership. Um, even though I learned about leadership playing basketball, I was learning about leadership with people who hated their jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was a big factor in my life. And during that time, I enrolled into barber school because I told myself that's what I wanted to do. I had originally dropped out of college with the plan Originally, I was going to go to barber school so that I could have a job while I was in school. And then during this time, my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, um, got pregnant. It got real, man. I'm in barber school and it got real, bro. You're talking about poor as hell, living in, you know, income restricted apartments where people were partying like crazy. You couldn't get no sea roaches everywhere. I'm struggling. My wife was working at JCPenney making like $6 an hour. I'm, I'm working at Arby's. I wasn't making a lot of money. You know, we were going to Amscot for payday advances because we couldn't make our bills. I used to remember we, we would look at how much money we had, what our budget was, and it was pretty much Little Caesars $5 pizzas every single day for dinner because that's all we could afford. Credit cards maxed out. I remember getting pulled over and crying, bro. Grown man crying because if this dude gave me a ticket, I was F. Like, I would not be able to pay rent. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, in the background, we had a lot of stuff going on. I got this full-time job at Arby's. I can't quit. I'm barely making it now. We're we're on food stamps, bro. We are getting government assistance. We are struggling, bro. I can't quit this job. I need I need this job more than anything, right? And I'm going to barber school, but it's it's not priority, right? I'm going part-time. Here's my wife, she's pregnant, and I'm thinking to myself, F all this, I'm just gonna go to the military. I got a meeting to meet up with dudes from the Air Force. It was gonna be the Air Force or it was gonna be um, the Navy. And my wife's like, if you do that, we're not together anymore. Pretty much she was saying, oh, I'm not raising my kid alone. Cause you know, she knows all the stories of being gone and being a military wife. She didn't want that for her, for her child. And ultimately you gotta respect that. So I was just like, man, I gotta finish barber school, bro took me two years to finish barber school. When I was in barber school, barber school was interesting because I remember the first month I was there, I fell in love with the industry because of my teacher. It was like the first two months or something like that. You're in a, in a classroom and you're learning theory. You're learning the basics. You're not on the floor practicing. You're, you're working with mannequins and stuff. I remember my teacher there, Miss Pam, she was amazing, man. Like, because she not only cared about teaching, and what you were learning, she cared how she did it. She would do demos all the time, she would help, but she also would cast vision into her students, into thinking beyond just doing hair. She was trying to inspire us to open schools. She was trying to inspire us to go to shows, open up real businesses and ownership. And I remember she hated the way that the school would operate on the floor. She just felt like they were taking advantage of the students and they weren't really trying to teach. And I remember nobody was teaching any of the barbers how to do hair designs, you know, designs with the trimmers or whatever. Everybody wanted to learn that. That was cool as hell back then. That's when people were still getting the double edge ups, the double lineups. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. So it's just a lineup and then you follow behind it with a line. <laughs> we were learning it by practicing. Nobody was teaching us. And all of a sudden, you know, the school owner didn't like that the barbers weren't charging for the designs. And we're like, we're not charging because we need the practice. So we would charge for the haircut and designs would be included. All of a sudden the school made it a rule that you had to charge the extra $15 for design. No more designs started coming in. We were just like, yo, if, if, if no designs are coming in and we can't practice because we have to charge $15 and nobody's willing to pay, can you at least provide like materials so we can learn like DVDs and stuff? None of that was happening. But anyways, when, when this all went down, she, you know, she kind of told us, yo, you guys should put together a petition and express yourself and stuff. And because of things like that, because she would do things that I felt were right, Pretty much she's gone, right? She's she's gone probably three months into me being in that school. It really started to feel like it was a waste of time going to barber school. I, looking back at it, at that, I hated that I let something like that control my love for what I was doing. 
between that going on and everything going on in the background of my life, it almost made me quit. And I know that there's people out there right now going through similar things, if not worse, that are on the brink of just quitting. But looking back at, at myself back then, could you imagine if I would have quit, bro? Could you imagine? I, I feel like I would have been successful in some other way, shape or form, but damn, if I would have quit, bro. I'll say that to say, you know, some of y'all are probably in barber school and it's not the best experience, but make it the best experience possible. Whatever you can control, but that's taking more, more clients and practicing, watching YouTube videos while you're in school and practicing. Don't let the students around you who are negative take your energy. Try to become a master of your craft, man, because that piece of paper don't mean nothing if there's no work behind it. You know, I remember graduating barber school after two years, my son's now born, my wife can't work, so he lost that income. I'm at Arby's, I just needed work. So I didn't go take the state board exam. I didn't get my license, I, I graduated barber school and I had my barber school certificate, but I didn't go get my license. Pretty much your boy was living on like two grand a month. <laughs> I was desperate, bro. I started working part-time as a barber without a license. And instead of going and taking the barber exam because I couldn't afford the damn test, I get a job part-time as a barber. The owner of the shop, he knew that I graduated barber school, I showed him that, and he knew I just needed to get my license. And I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. That's why I got hired at the shop. I was trying my hardest to keep my head above water. So I would work Sundays, I would work weekends, and then after Arby's, I would get off at like 4.30, 5 o'clock. I'd work to like 9 o'clock if I could. And I was just doing everything possible to make money so I could pro provide for my family. The weekdays were slow, but Sundays were great. So I would make on a Sunday what it would take me three days to make at Arby's. I'm like, oh man, this might be it. I'm excited, you know? I remember telling myself, if I could make on the weekends what I make in like a week at Arby's, then I can go down to part-time, um, start to transition over to the barbershop. And so it, it started happening. I went part-time and I remember after like, after going part-time two weeks later, um, I gave my two weeks notice or something like that. So a month later, I'm in the shop full-time. Reality check, boom, hit me in the face. Weekends were great, didn't make no money during the week. So it was like being back to square one. All I had was Arby's, my wife lost her job and we're barely, barely getting by. Looking back, there's one thing that I did right, man, is I didn't complain. I didn't tell nobody about what was going on in my life, personally. My wife was doing her thing, taking care of the baby. She's amazing. The only thing that I could control were a few things. How good I got at cutting hair. I need to study, literally. Staying up to two, three o'clock in the morning, just watching videos, obsessed. And I know some of you guys are doing the same thing, just watching tutorial after tutorial. People are like, yo, you watching tutorials again? Bro, that's all you do. If that's you, I can, I feel you, bro. I feel you. Shout out to the female barbers as well. I feel you, I was there. Other things that I can control was showing up. I would be the first and the last out from nine in the morning to nine at night, every single day, seven days a week. Couldn't wait for Sundays because that was my busiest day of the week. Some of y'all can feel me, some of you guys can't. I've seen so many barbers that I know are struggling, but I, sometimes I feel like people haven't struggled enough to be in a position where they gotta reach deep down and get to the point where you have to get obsessed and put in the work, cause mofos be complaining about money and be the first one to leave. Be complaining about money and you tell them hold a sign or, or work on a Sunday and they look at you like, like you got a, a second nose on your face. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get back to the story. But I could control those things, you know? I could control my customer service. And I remember I was doing a whole lot of research, man, and, and trying to get to the next level. I gotta get online scheduling. Nobody's doing that in the shop. Nobody's doing it in our area. I gotta get online scheduling. I need to do a website. So I built a website for myself. I did online scheduling. I had t-shirts that said Bossy the Bar. Like I was focused, man focus and i remember getting a phone call shop owner and he's like yo you gotta take that website down what are you talking about you're gonna build your clientele and if you leave you're gonna take all the clients the shop owner was never there he wasn't doing any marketing i'm not gonna complain to the shop owner this is my responsibility let me take control and i remember he called me and he told me i had to take it down bro couldn't believe it that was the first sign that i was in the wrong place but i had a sense of loyalty to him because 
he let me work there, you know what I mean? When I didn't have a license, I was trying to buy time and he let me work there. But that honestly is what put a fire in me that I needed to go get my license. I remember one day something happened, like my son got sick or something like that and I couldn't make it to work. And so I called in and I remember the shop owner was a jerk. And I was just like, bro, in a year, I've never missed a day and you giving me a hard time over this. And then it blew up into a big thing. I was ready to quit. I let my emotions get the best of me, which was not smart. Ultimately, what that did was it motivated me even more to get my license. And I remember Perez was my one of my business partners at Headlines. You know, he was wanting to open a barbershop. I was like trying to motivate him to do it. And then he brought on Danny. And then him and Danny were like working on it. And I was just like trying to motivate Perez to do it because I was going to go with him. Anyways, it, it pushed me to get my license because I knew that that was a ceiling over my head. I knew that it was controlling me. And like I said, I needed to be in control. At the moment that I got my head over water and I started making some money in the shop, and it was all because I was consistent. I was in the shop, customer service was first. Um, I really started building my clientele and my week started getting really busy. And I became the busiest barber in my shop probably like a year in. I got the money to go get my license. I remember I failed the first test. I went back, really, really studied. I did was I, I studied the state laws. I studied bacteria and disease. And I did that through a third party website. Ultimately, that's what helped me. I could have not gone to barber school ever and just did those things and I would have passed the barber's board exam. This is why on a side note, I put so much pressure on barber schools to do more than just uh, just enough, especially when you're charging people. I paid $17,000 for my barber's license back in 2010. More should have came with it. I remember I, I got my license. I got in my car and I got emotional, man. Like I called my wife and she was so happy for me. I remember calling my dad, um, he was happy for me. It took so much weight off of my shoulders and it made me feel like, like I, my life was gonna change. You know what I mean? Like my life was finally gonna change. I, I'll never forget that time in my car, man. Getting really emotional about that license. I, I don't know if any of y'all got emotional when you got your license. So I just wanted to tell this story, man, looking back, since we're going to really go back to the basics with this channel, especially for all my upcoming barbers. Then, you know, we'll, we'll definitely focus a little bit more. Or maybe I'll make some videos on how to make the most of your barber school, of your learning, how to learn faster how to learn better yeah we'll we'll do some stuff man we'll do some stuff with the channel hopefully uh you guys like this video it wasn't a waste of your time i'm here at the shop now if y'all can see it right there it says barber about to go in there go cut some hair and then um finalize some things with with my presentation for the ct barber expo we got to go back to the early days so that we can help you guys because it's more relatable content i feel like let me know if you you guys like the direction i'm going in the comments below smash the like button all that good stuff and i'll see you guys in the next video